Good evening. It's Wednesday, March 25, 2020 here in Cebu City. I'm Cherry Ann Lim and here's all you need to know in Newsbits tonight. Lapu-Lapu City Mayor Junard Ahong Chan has announced that he will place the city under an enhanced community quarantine starting March 29 to prevent the spread of the coronavirus disease. The Cebu Provincial Government is also set to place the entire province under an enhanced community quarantine within this week. Here's Chari Coronel for the details. Lapu-Lapu City Mayor Jonard Ahong Chan announced that the city will be placed under an enhanced community quarantine starting 12.01 a.m. of March 29 until further notice. This after the Department of Health Central Visayas has recorded one presumptive positive for coronavirus disease in the city. DOH Central Visayas Regional Director Jaime Bernada says the result of the presumptive positive case will be sent to Research Institute for Tropical Medicine for confirmation. However, Chan says he cannot wait for the situation to worsen, so he decided to place the entire city under enhanced community quarantine. The mayor added, under the enhanced community quarantine, public transportation will be suspended. Business establishments will be closed except for pharmacies, groceries, supermarkets, hospitals, banks, and water filling stations. Fast food chains and restaurants will remain open but should only cater takeout. Chan also announced that the Mactan Economic Processing Zone will temporarily shut down its operation within 72 hours. During the enhanced community quarantine, Residents are required to stay inside their houses, with exception to medical or health workers and personnel who will report for work within or outside Lapu-Lapu City. Also exempted are employees working for an exempt business establishment, including one member of the family or household who will transport them to their workplace. Employees are required to bring their identification card, while family or household members are required to bring a quarantine pass. Meanwhile, Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia says she will issue an executive order to declare the province of Cebu under enhanced community quarantine due to the increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the province. The quarantine will have to be custom-fitted to the situation in Cebu given that it is an island province. Effective Friday, March 27, passengers, regardless if Filipino or foreigner, will be banned to enter Cebu. But flights going outside Cebu will still be allowed. Chari Coronel, News Beats Tonight. The Department of Health announced today 84 additional cases of the coronavirus disease in the country bringing the total to 636. The agency also reported that three more patients had died due to COVID-19. Here's Kenneth Torres for the details. The Department of Health reported Wednesday afternoon 84 new cases of coronavirus disease, bringing the total confirmed cases in the country to 636. The agency also said six patients have recovered from the disease. They are patients 95, 10, 18, 82, 31, and 23. The DOH also announced that the death toll rose to 38 as three more patients with COVID-19 had died. The mortalities are patients 319, 326, and patient 29. Patients 319 and 326 were Filipino male, while patient 29 was an 82-year-old Filipino female. Meanwhile, Senator Coco Pimentel III announced that he tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Pimentel is the second senator to contract COVID-19 next to Majority Leader Juan Miguel Zubiri. In a statement, Pimentel says that he was informed of the test results last night. Swab samples were taken from him last March 20. The senator says that he strictly followed self-quarantine measures upon the advice of his doctor. Kenneth Torres, Newsbits Tonight. More stories in Newsbits Tonight after this short break. The Office of the Presidential Assistant for the Visayas has offered free rides exclusive to health workers and frontliners amid the coronavirus pandemic. 
Chris Chari Coronel for the details. The Office of the Presidential Assistant for the Visayas has released the schedules of Malasakit Bus, North and South Loop in Metro Cebu, exclusive to all health workers and frontliners amid the prevailing threat of coronavirus disease. The free shuttle routes for the South Loop include the route from Star Mall in Talisay City to Fuente Osmeña in Cebu City and vice versa. The schedule from Star Mall to Fuente Osmeña is at 4.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 8.30 p.m., while the return route from Fuente Osmeña to Star Mall is at 7.30 a.m., 3.30 p.m., and 11 p.m. Among the bus stops for this route include Star Mall Talisay, Bulacao Halo-Halo and Hot Pancake, University of San Jose Recoletos, Basak Campus, and Salazar Colleges. For the North Loop, the route will be from Eversley Hospital to Fuente Osmeña and vice versa, which will run from 4.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 8.30 p.m., while the returning route is at 7.30 a.m., 3.30 p.m., and 11 p.m. This route aims to accommodate healthcare workers at North General Hospital, Perpetual Socor Hospital, Cebu Doctors Hospital, Chongwa Hospital, Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center, St. Vincent General Hospital, Visayas Community Medical Center, Veles General Hospital, University of Cebu Medical Center, Dr. Ignacio M. Cortez, Siemens Hospital Cebu, and Eversley Child's Sanitarium. Bus stops for this route include the Cebu Provincial Capital, Central Nautical Highway, Talamban Gym and Sports Complex, R. London Extension and Mantawi Drive in Cebu City and Barangay Timpolo, Mandawi City. Chari Coronel, News Beats Tonight. For the latest in sports, here's Kenneth Torres. The Tokyo Olympics, which had been scheduled to start July 24, will now be pushed to 2021 on dates yet to be determined. This after the International Olympic Committee took steps of postponing the world's biggest sporting event. It will still be called the 2020 Olympics, which is a symbolic gesture that the IOC hopes will allow the Games to stand as a beacon of hope. Four-time Olympic hockey champion Haley Wickenheiser the first IOC member to criticize the bodies long held to change the date called the postponement the message athletes deserve to hear. With IOC President Thomas Bach guiding the process, the committee had said that it might take up four weeks to announce a postponement, but it took only two days. It was said that many of Tokyo's arenas, stadiums, and hotels were under contract for games that was supposed to be held from July 24 to August 9. Kenneth Torres, Newsbits Tonight. To get the latest, visit www.sunstar.com.ph. Follow us on our YouTube channel and official social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Sherry Ann Lip. Good evening.